This is RopeCam. It's a software that gives you the ability to produce odd threads like rope threads using a regular lathe insert. You can see in this image that this thread has been produced by this insert that does not have the same shape of the thread. It does that by doing a series of threading cycles to both rough and finish the thread so that you don't have to spend a lot of money on a custom form tool. Let me show you how it works. The software has a series of pages that will take you step by step through the process. On this first page, we need to tell it which type of thread to make, and whether it's on the inner or the outer diameter of the workpiece. I'm going to use an outer diameter rope thread for this example. Next, tell it what units you want to use, and if you're on an outer diameter thread, then you can tell it the axis order to use on the tool approach and retract, whether it's going to do one and then the other, or both simultaneously. The Z positive and negative direction tell it whether to go from left to right, or right to left. On the tool side of things, you can use a grooving tool or a turning tool. You can set the radius here, and if it's a grooving tool, you can set the width here. If it's a turning tool, you can also set where the offset is taken. You can put the start and the end point of the thread here, and the increment of finish cut will define the step over that it takes and generate an estimated roughness and scallop height. So the smaller this number, the smoother the finish. The last option is whether to output cues or not in the can cycle for machines like Morisikis. Once you're done filling out the page, you can press OK to get to the next page. This page is where you can put in all of your thread dimensions. This diagram and the values that you get will change depending on the thread that you select. You can also give an angle for a tapered thread, or a number of starts for a multi-start thread. This last option defines whether the finish pass is going to cut the flat on the OD, or whether it's already been turned down. Once you're done, again, press OK to get to the next page. Here, we can choose our roughing strategy. If you only want a finish pass, you can choose finishing, and it'll go with the parameters set on all of the other pages. If you want roughing, or roughing and finishing, it'll use these parameters for the roughing cycle. You have a step over in Z, a step down in X, and an amount to leave for the finish pass. If you want to do a roughing and finishing pass, you have a few more options. You can leave it so that it uses the same tool at the same spindle speed, or if you want to change either of those, you can choose this option and define a new rad for the new tool, or the top and the bottom of the code for the roughing so that you can change things like spindle speed and location to go to after the roughing. Once you're happy with that, again, press OK to go to the next page. This is the last page that you need to fill out. In this section, you can choose the can cycle that you want to use, and the letter codes that go with that can cycle. You can also set whether the X and Z happen on the same line, or on separate lines. This is an incremental clearance value that it'll use for all of its repositioning moves. And here, you can choose how accurately the number is displayed to a certain decimal place. These boxes can be used to type in what you want to appear at the start and the end of the code. If you're only roughing or only finishing, this will apply to the entire program, but if you're roughing and finishing, this will only apply to the finishing portion, and the roughing portion can be defined in the roughing data page. You can also check this box if you want to output all of the parameters in brackets at the top of the code, so they're easy to see. If you're happy with your selections, and you're ready to create code, you have to check the simulation first by pressing this button. Once up, it'll simulate both the roughing and the finishing routine, and you can zoom in, and change speed, and re-simulate as many times as you want. Once that's done, you can close, and you're ready to post the code. 
once you press the button, the code will appear so you can check it, save it, and send it to the machine. I hope you've enjoyed this RopeCam demonstration. Thanks for joining me.